iCloud and iDrive, two cloud storage services with confusingly similar names but fundamentally different purposes. I've spent years testing both platforms and today I'm breaking down exactly what sets them apart. Whether you're backing up precious photos or securing critical business data, choosing the wrong service could be a very, very, very costly mistake. What shocked me basically most during testing was how dramatically faster one service was with large files. And we're talking nearly twice, twice the speed. I'll show you which service can actually restore your entire computer after a crash, not just your files, why photographers and video editors are increasingly using one specific service and the crucial, crucial security setting that Apple doesn't make obvious but could protect your most sensitive data from hackers. And by the end, you'll know exactly which service gives you the most value for your money. First, let's address the elephant in the room. These similar names cause real confusion. Despite what many think, iCloud and iDrive aren't related companies. Even though both use Apple's naming convention of dropping an I at the start of the name, iCloud is Apple's integrated ecosystem service designed primarily for Apple device users. It's built to make your experience seamless across iPhone, iPad, and Mac devices by syncing your data, settings, and content. iDrive, on the other hand, is a comprehensive backup service that has nothing to do with Apple. It's platform agnostic, meaning it works across Windows, Mac, Linux, and iOS, and Android, and iDrive's primary primary focus is robust backup and recovery solutions rather than ecosystem integration. Now that we've established they're basically completely different services, let's dive deeper into how they compare across various features. iCloud is Apple's native cloud storage service and it's deeply integrated into its ecosystem. Think of it as Apple's preferred way for you to access the cloud. Convenient, but it certainly has some limitations on what you can store and how you can access it. And after spending plenty of time with iCloud, I like that it excels at being essentially invisible. You rarely need to think about it. Your notes from your iPhone appear on your Mac, your photos taken on your iPad show up on your Apple TV, and if you lose your phone, your contacts and messages can be restored to a new device almost instantly. iDrive approaches things differently. It's designed as a backup service first, with file access and synchronization as secondary features. Setting up iDrive requires more active involvement, installing the application, selecting what you want to back up, and configuring settings. When it comes to file syncing and access, a core feature of any cloud storage service, both iCloud and iDrive, have some noticeable differences in how they implement it. iCloud Drive functions similarly to other consumer cloud storage services like Google Drive or Dropbox. Files placed in your iCloud Drive folder sync across your devices and can be accessed via apps or the web interface. The syncing is reliable, but to be honest, pretty basic. What sets iCloud apart is how it integrates with Apple applications. For example, the Files app on iOS seamlessly incorporates iCloud storage and apps like Pages or Numbers can automatically save to iCloud by default. iDrive also offers file syncing through its iDrive sync folder. It's not as seamless and intuitive as iCloud Drive. For example, you can only download one file at a time, but it will keep your data synced across your devices. One area that iDrive excels over iCloud Drive is that it offers block level syncing. This means when you make changes to file, only the changed portions are uploaded rather than the entire file again. In my real world testing, this made a huge difference when working with large files. When I edited a one gigabyte video file, iCloud needed to upload the entire file again, while iDrive only uploaded the few megabytes that actually changed that file. Completing the task in a fraction of the time, which is always nice. iDrive also offers selective sync, allowing you to choose which folders sync to which devices, a feature notably limited to iCloud. This granular control setting is invaluable when managing storage across multiple devices. Let's examine backup capabilities, which reveal perhaps the most significant differences between these services. iCloud Backup is primarily focused on iOS devices. It creates backups of your device settings, app data, messages, and other personal information. These backups are pretty easy to set up, often enabled by default, and make restoring a new device remarkably simple if you remain in the Apple ecosystem. 
Speaking of coffee, I'm basically fueled by it daily, and after struggling to find consistently great beans, my partner and I founded Coffeeness to create the perfect chocolatey espresso blend. We've tested this blend in over 100 machines to make it perfect. Take a look at our overflowing storage rooms right here with all the machines. From high-end manual espresso machines, like this beauty here, to Breville or Sage semi-automatics, or maybe you're the super automatic guy and you prefer a Dura machine, like this one here. Or the budget models from DeLonghi that works also perfectly with our espresso. It delivers exceptional results every single time. Wonderful. We personally visit our partner farms in Brazil every year, sourcing 100% Arabica beans through direct trade relationships. And each small batch is freshly roasted in Brooklyn, resulting in a medium strength espresso with delightful chocolate and hazelnut notes. Our customers love it too, with hundreds of five-star reviews on our website and Trustpilot. One reviewer wrote, great beans for my super auto with smooth crema as in a coffee bar in Italy. Lovely to hear that. Use the coupon code CLOUDWORDS for 5% off your first order and European viewers visit our EU store for beans roasted in Frankfurt and US viewers head to coffiness.com for Brooklyn roasted beans. All the links are in the description box below. And now back to today's video iCloud's backup capabilities for Mac computers are more limited. While it can backup documents and desktop files, it doesn't create full system backups. For that, Apple offers a separate solution called Time Machine, which typically backs up to external devices and external drives and not the cloud. In practical terms, if your Mac crashes, iCloud might help you restore your photos and documents to a new machine, but you need to reinstall applications and reconfigure settings. iDrive takes a much more comprehensive approach to backups. It can back up virtually anything, entire drives, specific folders, system settings, application data, and much more. It retains multiple versions of files and offers scheduling options from continuous backup to specific timeframes. If you've backed up a huge amount of data and you have a slow connection, iDrive will even send you a physical device to restore your files if you request it. So in that sense, it's similar to Backblaze online backup. They also have this um, system where they send you drives that you can back up to, you send it back to them, they upload it to their servers, and if you need to restore your files, they just send you the, the hard drives back. They, they lend you the hard drives who will, so you don't have to buy them, so you just send them back to the service. Version control is another fundamental feature with noticeable differences between these two services. With version control, really, you do time travel, if you will, and recover or restore an older version of a file. And it's great to review changes or, or correct the mistake if, 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 that you've done weeks ago, and now you want to revert back to a certain version of a file. iCloud offers limited version control as it keeps previous versions of your files for 30 days. This is fine for like casual use, but over time, you can lose older versions of your files, and well, you might just need that version from day 31, basically, and you cannot get it. iDrive maintains up to 30 versions of all files indefinitely. This can be absolutely crucial if you need to recover from ransomware or track changes to important documents over time. And in my testing, this feature has saved me multiple times when I need to recover specific versions of documents from weeks or even months ago. Let's talk about speed and performance because this can make a huge difference in day-to-day -day use. In our extensive testing using a standardized five gigabyte test folder, iCloud average upload speeds of about 11 minutes. It's not the fastest cloud storage services, uh, service I've ever tested, to be honest. It's also not the slowest. If you want to have more, inf more information about the speed of each cloud storage service, click on the link in the description box below where we analyze all the speed test results from our cloud storage services. Also, our 2025 speed testing report is coming up and you can get that only if you're subscribed to our newsletter. So make sure to do that as well down in the description box below. iCloud's integration with the operating system means files can be accessed instantly through the iCloud app on your Apple device. In my testing, iCloud generally provided good but not exceptional speeds. Upload and download performance was consistent but not remarkable compared to dedicated backup services. By comparison, iDrive delivered very impressive 
performance in my tests, particularly for a service offering so many features. It completed the same five gigabytes folder in under seven minutes, one area where iDrive particularly impressed me was with its bandwidth management tools. You can throttle upload and download speeds during specific hours, ensuring backups don't interfere with other activities like video streaming or even online gaming. This level of control is something iCloud simply does not offer. During my years of testing these services, I found both to be pretty reliable with very few syncing failures or service interruptions, and both of them had pretty low CPU usage when in action. And this is great for those who need to perform other tasks while their uploads and downloads essentially run in the background. Now, let's take a look at security and privacy. All the best cloud storage features, well, basically don't mean anything if the service is vulnerable to cyber threats. Fortunately, both services have good security features, but as you might have guessed by now, there are differences in implementation and functionality. iCloud uses something called, now it's a little bit of a mouthful, AES 128-bit encryption to protect your data while on its servers. This is essentially not as secure as the more common 256-bit key size, but it is still pretty strong in my book. If you wanna increase your security, you can enable advanced data protection with end-to-end -end encryption. In most cases, enabling this level of encryption is a good idea as it protects your data better than Apple's standard security measures and ensures that only you can decrypt your files. One downside is that the advanced data protection feature does not apply to all your data. The data from your mail app is a prime example. Users in the UK also recently had this feature taken away from them following a row between Apple and the British Home Office. Aside from using advanced data protection, you can take advantage of two-factor authentication, app-specific passwords, and its built-in password manager app. iDrive takes a slightly different approach to security and privacy. It gives you the option to activate client-side encryption when you create an account. This means that only you have access to your encryption keys. Even iDrive can't access your files, plus it applies to all your files, not just some. There is an asterisk here. You can only enable this type of encryption when you first create your account. If you choose not to, you can't go back and turn it on on a later date. You need to create a whole new account. Also, with this added layer of protection, you lose the ability to share files with others through your iDrive cloud folder. The pricing structures of these services reveal a lot about their target markets. iCloud Storage starts with a free five gigabyte tier and scales up through monthly plans, which options ranging from 50 gigabytes for about $1 per month, all the way up to 12 terabytes with Apple One. This pricing structure is designed to be accessible and easy to understand, but it can become quite expensive if you need lots of storage. iDrive offers a more generous 10 gigabyte free tier and then jumps to larger storage allotments with annual pricing. Their personal plans offer five terabytes for about 70 to $80 per year, while business plans start at 250 gigabytes for about $100 per year. When you break it down, by cost per terabyte, iDrive often works out cheaper, especially when you factor in their frequent promotional discounts and occasional lifetime subscription offers. Right now, you can take advantage of a promotional offer we have with iDrive to get 75% off your first year, and I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can check it out, only for CloudWord subscribers. Now that we've explored what iCloud and iDrive offer and how they differ, I'm gonna dive into some real world scenarios. So I can show you how these services compare when in use. First, think of all those family photos you take on your iPhone. With iCloud, those images automatically sync across all your Apple devices, including your iPad and Mac. And if you set up family sharing, they're gonna be accessible on your family members' devices too, as long as they have an Apple device. However, there's a significant catch. If anyone in your family uses Android devices or wants to back up photos from a dedicated camera, things get considerably, considerably more complicated with iCloud. For example, it can be challenging to back up photos from an Android device from a MacBook. iDrive handles the situation differently. You're not gonna get such a seamless experience when accessing photos and videos you make with an Apple device, but, you do get more robust backup options that work better across platforms like Android and Windows. 
You can easily back up photos from any device, including your DSLRs, SD card, and even create multiple folders to keep things nice and organized. I like that. <laughs> iDrive's mobile app can automatically back up your phone's photos regardless of whether you're using iOS or Android, and you have much more control over how your photos are organized and stored. For content creators, working with large media files, both services present different advantages and challenges. iCloud integrates perfectly with Final Cut Pro and other Apple creative apps, making it easy to keep projects in sync across devices. Plus, iCloud does a good job of storing data from third-party apps. You can always see which apps are using iCloud under the Saved to iCloud section of your account, and you can deactivate them if you wish. iDrive, on the other hand, offers more affordable storage for large large files. Plus, their block level sync means only changed portions of files are uploaded, and this can save enormous amounts of time and bandwidth when working with big media files. In my testing, with a 4K video project, iDrive's block level sync saved hours of upload time when making really just small edits to large video files or to the, to the um, video catalog. By now, it's probably clear that these services aren't mutually exclusive. Many users, myself included, actually benefit from using both. You might think that I favor iDrive significantly over iCloud, and for many situations, iDrive is more flexible, that's true. But that's not to say iCloud doesn't have its positive aspects as well. I use iCloud for seamless day-to-day -day syncing with my Apple ecosystem and iDrive for comprehensive backup of all their devices and data. This combination provides both convenience and security, though it does come obviously at a higher total cost. But for me, peace of mind and convenience is basically worth it. So what's your experience with these services? Have you tried either one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this comparison helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more cloud storage reviews and comparisons. And remember to subscribe to our newsletter to get the full speed breakdown of our 2025 cloud storage speed report. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.